My house is lonely. It stands on the southern slope of the Sussex Downs, commanding a great view of the Channel. I, my old housekeeper and my bees, have the estate all to ourselves. It is, therefore, a most singular thing that a problem as abstruse and unusual as any I've faced in my long professional career should have come to me after my retirement and be brought to my very door. The Lion's Mane. At this time, the good Watson had passed almost beyond my ken. An occasional weekend visit was the most that I ever saw of him. Watson, my dear fellow. How are you, Holmes? Perfectly delighted to see you, my dear fellow. Perfectly delighted. Uh, wedlock suits you, Watson. You put on seven and one half pounds since I saw you last. Seven, actually. Indeed. I should have thought a little more. Just a trifle more, I fancy. But I also infer that you're in danger of losing it again if your wife remains away from home much longer. Indeed. She returns tomorrow from a visit. But how did you know? How do I know? I observed it. How do I know that you've moved your dressing table to the other side of your room? Holmes, if you had lived a few centuries ago, they would certainly have burned you alive. Whereas you, my dear doctor, would be as safe as houses in any century you choose. Lucky man. Tell me how you knew. Ha! Ah, simplicity itself. Pace badly shaved on your right side used to be your left. You couldn't well move your window, must have moved your dressing table. Yes, by Jove. But how the deuce did you know that my wife was away? Ha! Where the deuce is your second waistcoat button? And what the deuce is yesterday's carnation doing in today's lapel? Oh, this is elementary, my dear Watson. Child's play of deduction. <laughs> yes, it's rather good, isn't it? You think so? Oh, don't you? I do practically nothing but ask questions. When I'm in it at all. Bide your time, Watson. You'll get your moment in the spotlight one of these days. Show me that program. Uh, here. Yes, thank you. Sherlock Holmes, a drama in four acts. I thought you'd hate it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You were always saying how you loathe being in the public gaze. Yeah, still I was working hardly matters now. You're publishing the stories again, aren't you? Yes, that's true. Well, I don't see why someone else shouldn't write a play about me. Us. Us, yes, us. Yes. Mm. You say he plays me as well? Oh, yes. Well, I've always admired versatility. What's he like, this um, William Gillette person? Well, he does look like you, I suppose. Yes, but does he get below the surface? Oh, uh, he's very good at the detective business and the action scenes. It's rather a good fight. But the rest? It is a family entertainment, Holmes. So this American gentleman isn't parading my less attractive faults for the world to see? Not all of them, no. Oh, good. <laughs> How does it end? With me triumphant, I suppose. Uh, Holmes. My dear fellow. I was going to warn you. Ah, yes, here we are, here we are. Holmes throws the photographs down to the desk and turns to face Alice. <clears throat> now that you see me in my true light, Miss Faulkner, we have nothing left to say but good night and goodbye, which you ought to be very glad to do. Oh, oh that's excellent. It's very good, very good. <clears throat> Even my supposed friendship for you was a pretense, a sham. Alice, I don't believe you. Why not? From the way you speak, from the way you look, you're not the only one who can tell things from small details. <gasps> your powers of observation are somewhat remarkable, Miss Faulkner, and your deduction concerning my friendship for you is quite correct. <clears throat> I suppose, indeed, I know. That I love you. Well, well. That's fascinating. You're not angry? Should I be? It's hardly in character. Is it? <sighs> As you said, was good family entertainment. The obligatory happy ending. Oh, well. <laughs> Retirement certainly changed you. Indeed. Oh, yes. I don't think I've seen you this relaxed. 
Not for years. Relaxed. <laughs> yeah, that's the very word. What's funny? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. That's good, don't you think? Nice turn of phrase. Makes my character sound like an idiot. Oh, so you won't be using it in one of your stories? Certainly not. Oh. Besides, I'm not in the habit of stealing material from other writers. I'm perfectly capable of making up memorable phrases of my own, thank you very much. Of course you are. Mm. Thank you for those Strand magazines, by the way. Oh, you got them good. Um, what did you think of the stories? My housekeeper loved them. And you, of course, never gave them a glance. No time, I'm afraid. No, no. Do you know, I'm busier now than I ever was before. Is that a fact? Oh, yes. We're not jealous of you at Scotland Yard? No, sir. We are very proud of you. And if you come down tomorrow, there's not a man from the oldest inspector to the youngest constable who wouldn't be glad to shake you by the hand. Yes, I thought you'd like that bit. Sorry you were too busy to read it. Hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, and while we're on the subject... Mm, go on. In the empty house, yes. about when I was in Tibet, you say I spent some time with the head lama. Oh, that's what you told me. One L. I beg your pardon? should only have one L. L-A-M-A. -A, one L. You spelt it with two. I did nothing of the sort. Well, if not you, the, the typesetter at the Strand. Oh, dear. You're familiar with the word. Enough to know that it's not exactly appropriate. An animal, isn't it? Hmm. Sort of mountain goat. Popular for its skin and its milk and given to congregating in small herds. I don't believe they have heads. Of course they have heads. Not in the hierarchical sense, they don't. I spent some time with a head mountain goat. Oh, God. I wouldn't worry about it too much. No? No. I doubt if his supreme radiance will be offended. I don't think the Strand sells many copies in Tibet. Ah, oh, the air here is wonderful. Yes, yes, isn't it? <sighs> and that view. Mm. You can see the entire bay from this spot. Glorious. And the beach. There's a short walk away, plus the long descent down the cliff path, of course. Does anyone ever go there? Oh, certainly. Yes, I do, for one. You do? To the beach? Hmm. There are places where the water's trapped between tides, natural swimming pools. Mm. I don't think I ever imagined you as a swimmer. Did I ever show you my trophies? No, no, you didn't. Oh, it's from this, isn't it? Of course it was a long time ago. Was it? Hmm. Well, one doesn't lose the knack. It's a remarkably agreeable pastime. <laughs> you know, Holmes, in many ways I envy you. Hmm? And in others? Oh, I don't mean to be rude. My dear chap. Well, it's not a life I could lead. Not for long. The isolation would get to me. To each his own. Oh, yes, yes. Of course. But, um, do you ever see anyone? Hmm? Yes, from time to time. Uh, who? People who get lost. You don't seem to be over-endowed with neighbours. It's quite a large place, about <coughs> half a mile away, that direction. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. No, no, I'm well hidden here. A geographical quirk. So who lives there? Uh, an assortment of people. It's a school. School? Right out here, in the middle of nowhere. Hmm, quite a famous school, actually. The Gables. Oh, oh, never heard of it, I'm afraid. How big is it? Fairly select. A score of pupils, only a few masters, run by one Howard Stackhurst. Mm, never heard of him, either. Oh, shame on you, Doctor. He's an excellent all-round scholar. Oh, um, you, uh, you know him well, do you? Hmm, we've been friendly ever since I came here. Oh, really? Hmm, oh, yes. Drop in on each other sometimes. In the evenings. I see. Mm -hmm. You haven't mentioned my garden. It's, um, very nice. I'm surprised that I've taken it up. Well, you must admit, it's not the first thing that leaps into mind where you're concerned. Has no knowledge of practical gardening. Oh, please. Not that damned list again. Must be nearly 20 years ago. 24. 24. Good Lord. Practically a quarter of a century. Yeah? And you still know it by heart? Mm. Some of it. <clears throat> I've spent a good deal of my time thinking about the past. Holmes. That can be an unhealthy sort of practice. Ever the doctor, of course. Well, I'm grateful for your concern, but in this case, it's unfounded. I give at least as much time to other matters. Such as? Well, look around you. Nature, the natural world, infinite diversity in infinite combinations. What could be more fascinating? Come on. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? It's time for you to meet my fellow students. Open Channel D. Channel D? Open. Excellent. Now, we wait. 
Nothing's happening. Patience, Doctor. Their sense of time isn't the same as ours, or yours at least. <clears throat> what did you mean, fellow students? Well, sometimes I'm convinced that they're learning far more about me than I am about them. Oh, really? I never quite believed it, you know. Oh, I know. I mean, bees. You shouldn't have been surprised. They really are the most fascinating study and the most demanding. Oh, well, I'm not about to argue with you. What's supposed to be happening? Well, by opening that particular channel, you double the number of exits from this hive. Yes. The question is, how long will it take them to realize the fact? And once they do know... What will happen? And that's the sort of thing you do all day? All night, too, sometimes. Martha's quite convinced that I'm mad. A woman of great perception, your housekeeper. Oh. Uh, this kind of work does call for a particular temperament, I suppose. Oh. Uh, pass me the cover, will you? Mm. Here. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, don't be. The conditions aren't ideal anyway. You know, your visit was singularly ill-timed. It was? Yeah, she really should have been here ten days ago. Oh? Yeah, it's excitement you're after. Why, what happened? Some of your bees escaped, did they? Not exactly. There was a murder. The victim's name was Fitzroy McPherson. He was the science master at the Gable School. Watson, are you listening? I can't believe you didn't mention this the minute I arrived. I wanted you to settle in first. Settle in? I'm only here for the weekend, for goodness sake. Back to work on Monday for some of us, you know. Well, I'm sorry, but you still have all day today, or well, that should be ample. Ample for what? Well, for you to solve the mystery, of course. What on earth are you talking about? I gave the matter a lot of thought. Oh, yes? And it seemed to me that we had three alternatives. One, I could simply tell you what happened. I presume you rejected that one immediately as being far too straightforward. Absolutely. Two, I could write it up and present you with a manuscript to read on your journey home. You could write it up? Why not? The way you wrote up The Adventure of the Blanche Soldier? Perhaps not exactly like that, no. Uh, Watson has some remarkable characteristics of his own. A companion to whom each development comes as a perpetual surprise and to whom the future is always a closed book is indeed an ideal helpmate. I see I'm not the only one with a good memory. You just wait until it gets published. The letters will roll in. Three? Oh, three? I could give you the basic facts, show you the evidence, take you round to the sites and you could try to solve it. Are you saying that it hasn't been worked out yet? No, 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 no. I've cleared the whole thing up. So you're proposing that we traipse around together and I make a fool of myself while you look on, is that it? No, of course not. If you'd rather, we'll forget the whole thing. It's just the... What? <clears throat> well, I... I hoped you might rather enjoy it. I, I thought it might be... Fun. Fun? Hmm. I didn't think that my bees would grip you for very long. I didn't want you to be bored. Oh, my dear chap. Of course, if you think it might be beyond you. But that is the most transparent bit of persuasion I've heard in a long time. I'm not surprised. I'm somewhat out of practice. Well, why not? <laughs> You'll do it. How many days did it take you? Three. I've only got one. True enough. And why are we wasting time here? <clears throat> <clears throat> Tell me about the victim. Well, what do you want to know? Everything. Give me all the facts. His name was Fitzroy McPherson. Late twenties, an athlete in his youth, but rheumatic fever left him with a weak heart, and he turned to science. He went swimming every day, whatever the weather. I often joined him. Always in the same place? Yes, more or less. Ah, here we are. Is that the path down the cliff? The one you mentioned? Yes. Stackhurst and I were about where we are now when we saw McPherson. Mm. What time was this? About seven in the morning. A stroll before breakfast. What day of the week? Tuesday. The weather? Why do you want to know? Because it might be relevant, of course. And because it's what you would ask. Very good, Watson. Still and calm. The temperature? Already warm and getting hotter. There had been a storm the night before, a real gale. But that morning, all nature was newly washed and fresh. Cut out the poetry, Holmes. Hmm, sorry. The weather was calm and clear. The day promised hot. Very good. Now, you say you saw the victim. Where was the body lying? It wasn't. Holmes! At that moment, McPherson was still alive, though only just. Ah, stay here. 
I'm going to go down the path a short way. Don't move. All right. Can you see me? No. Very good. Now you're me. Right. This is what happened. Good God. Wait! Don't move! Excellent, Watson. My actions to the inch. I thought you were supposed to be dead. Not quite. How close? Very close. Well, then. Uh, oh, sorry. That's better. Now, are you in exactly the same position as he was? Uh, let me see. Uh, face down, left arm outstretched, legs twisted. Yes, yes, I am. Good. Thank you. But there is one important difference. Go on. McPherson was naked from the waist up and wasn't wearing any shoes or socks. Right. What happened next? This. And then he died. I'm afraid there was nothing we could have done. Hmm. Must have been a horrible experience. Yes. I can't deny it. I've seen more death than I care to remember, but this, this was particularly unpleasant. Such a young man. Hmm. And on a morning that made one feel good to be alive. <laughs> Those words. I couldn't quite make them out. The lying man? I tried to reproduce exactly what Stackhurst and I heard. Try again. The linesman, no, surely not. No, the only sense I could twist out of the sounds was the lion's mane. The lion's mane? Mm. That's hardly more likely than my versions. What did it mean? I had no idea. Hmm. And so? So, I remember it. I'll file it away for later. New information may well throw some light on it. Bravo. Now, excuse me. So... Yes, that's, that's better. <clears throat> now, can I tell you anything more? Of course you can. Was there any obvious cause of death? The man had been flogged. Flogged? Hmm. His back was covered with dark red lines. There was long wheels curved right round his body. My God. Still bleeding? Oh, yes. The wounds were obviously fresh. Anything else? Blood all over his chin. His chin? He'd bitten through his lower lip with the pain. So, he had just enough strength to get up the cliff path. <sighs> you looked down onto the beach, of course. Of course. And? It was deserted. McPherson's footprints were perfectly clear. He'd come down the path with a spring in his step and staggered back up as much on his hands and knees as on his feet. Ah, the erratic footprints. They started from here, at the bottom of the path? Yes. What about signs on the beach? Oh, unfortunately, this shingle holds hardly any marks. Mm. So you weren't able to read anything? A little. A storm tide had left a sizable lagoon, bigger than usual. His intention was to use it for his swim. But he didn't get that far. He started to undress by these rocks. His towel and the rest of his clothes were still here, neatly folded, and there were a few bare footprints. Do we know how long he was here? According to Stackhurst, it couldn't have been longer than ten minutes, or fifteen at the most. He watched McPherson leave the school. Right. Let me make sure I've got this. He came down the cliff path in high spirits. Put his towel down just here, took off his shoes, his socks and his shirt, and then he was attacked. That's how I read it? Yes. And then he struggled back up the path to get help. Hmm. What are you looking for? Hiding places. Somewhere our murderer could have concealed himself. Now, that doesn't make sense. You can't see the cliff top from here, so he couldn't possibly have known that you were so close. He had no reason to hide, did he? I thought not. If he'd still been on the beach as I came down the path, I'd have seen him at once. Mm -hmm. It's like a locked room mystery. A locked room mystery without walls. Virtually unique. Amazing that you should just chance to be on the scene. Well, at the risk of spouting clichés to a writer, life is supposed to be stranger than fiction. Especially your life, seemingly. <laughs> now, is there anything else I can tell you? Yes, there is. There was nobody on the beach. But what about the sea? Any boats? Excellent. Two fishing boats, but a considerable way out, and no signs of any craft being beached. Very well. There's obviously no more to be learned here. Back to the top, I think. Mm. Did your companion... Uh, what was his name? Stackhurst. Yeah. 
Did he wait with the body while you went down to the beach? Yes, uh, but there was a development I haven't mentioned yet. Ah, oh, good. I could do with some new material. What happened? Uh, a minute or so after Paul McPherson died... Before you went down the path? Yes. Yeah. Stackhurst and I were kneeling over him when a shadow fell across us. Ian Murdoch. For a deserted cliff, it seems to have been positively swarming. Is he from the school too? Mathematics master. Tall, thin, dark, somewhat aloof. A fierce temper, so I'm told, though usually he managed to contain it. A friend of the dead man? Apparently not. There had been some incident with McPherson's dog. Murdoch threw it through a plate glass window. Good God. This is a man in charge of children. Stackhurst told me he'd have dismissed him on the spot, but he was too valuable as a teacher. How did he react to the sight of the body? He seemed to be honestly shocked. Poor fellow. Poor fellow, what can I do? How can I help? An act, do you think? A good one if it was. Which direction did he approach from? Uh, hard to say, I'm afraid. Our attention wasn't exactly on our surroundings. Mm. So he could have come up the cliff park? Well, if he did, he was very gingerly. I didn't see any footprints. Did you suspect him at that particular moment? He was close at hand. Logically, he was a suspect. Yes, but how did he strike you? Was he acting suspiciously at all? <sighs> You know, this is just like that damn stage play. The similarities elude me. Questions. All I'm doing is asking an endless string of questions. It's always you who gets the interesting speeches. I thought you liked it that way. Amazing, Holmes. That's incredible, Holmes. It all seems so simple now you explain it, Holmes. But I'm not sure I want to go down in history as a literary device to make you seem even cleverer than you are. Um, eight. Not to mention lending credence to your more dubious deductions. Eight what? What do you mean, dubious? Eight what? Consecutive sentences without a question mark. Oh, for goodness sake, I'm talking about fiction. This is real life. Is it? Please. If we start discussing your precious Tibetan mysticism, we'll be here all day. You think that will be long enough? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Now, let's get back to something more concrete before I forget everything you've told me so far. Now, you and Stackhurst were standing over poor McPherson's body when this dog-hurling mathematics tutor turned up. What then? I sent Murdoch to inform the police in Fulworth. That's the nearest village. Then I left Stackhurst to guard the body and went to look at the beach. By the time I got back, Murdoch had returned with the official representative of the law, Constable Anderson, a member of that peculiar, slow Sussex breed. Holmes... Mm, ah, fond of good sense under a silent exterior. Oh, you certainly have mellowed. Good sense, which he instantly demonstrated by asking me for advice. On the other hand, maybe not. What did you tell him? To let no one touch the body until the doctor had seen it and to stop people trampling all over the sea. And then... And then what? And then I went home for breakfast. Here you are. Oh, I think you are. The lunch will be a few minutes. The landlord was slightly taken aback by your request for something with no meat in it. Was he able to rise to the challenge? Not with any great creativity. You're getting a cheese and pickle sandwich. Oh, splendid. And you? Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't resist the roast beef. You did say you wouldn't mind. Not in the least. I'm, I've no desire to inflict my idiosyncrasies on others. Thank you. <sighs> the walk wasn't too much for you? No, no, not at all. Oh, no. Good, good. What was it? A couple of miles? No, oh, nearer three. <clears throat> to your success with the case. Ah, thank you. Mmm. Mm. You can't beat a real country brew. Yes, I thought you'd appreciate it. But that's not why I brought you here. Well, I hardly thought it was. So come on. What's the Fulworth connection? This. What is it? Well, have a look. Ah, torn from a cheap writing pad, but done carefully. No jagged edges or bits missing. Folded once. And look how exact the alignment is. This was done by someone exceptionally neat and meticulous, a clear thinker, probably quite intelligent. Watson, that is positively scintillating. Thank you. Unfortunately, it's also totally irrelevant. Oh? You were supposed to simply look at the message. You're the one who told me that the outside of a letter can be as informative as the inside. Not, alas, in this case, the message. <sighs> Very well. This is your handwriting. Well, of course it is. The police would hardly have let me keep the original. It was vital evidence. Well, how was I supposed to know what it was? Mm, right, let's see. I will be there, you may be sure, 
Mordy. The original was folded inside a card case in Macpherson's left-hand trouser pocket. He took it with him on his morning stroll? He did. What was the writing like? Undoubtedly feminine, rather scrawling, done with a well-worn nib and perfectly ordinary ink. And the paper? A rather better quality than my cheap writing pad. It wasn't meant as a criticism. Did you know this, Maudie? No, but Stackhurst enlightened me. Miss Maud Bellamy lives in Fullworth ah. with her father and her brother. She's the beauty of the neighbourhood, Holmes. Quite a one. Mm. Did Stackhurst know about her connection with Macpherson? No. The full details only came to light later, when the police went through Macpherson's things at the school. The romance had been conducted in great secrecy. The soup begins to thicken. Uh, see what you meant about memorable phrases of your own. What else do you know about the girl? Her uh, father's something of a man of substance in this village. Owns all the fishing boats and bathing huts. He worked his way up from nothing. Someone like that can be fiercely protective. And the dead man had arranged an assignation with his daughter. Was he married, Macpherson? No. And he had a good job with excellent prospects. Why the secrecy? That was obviously something that had to be investigated. Stackhurst and I came here to talk to the Bellamys that same afternoon. And? Ah, here come the sandwiches. A supreme example of how enthusiasm and can triumph over limited technique. Oh, you think so? Well, how do you? I don't know that triumph is exactly the word I'd use. Uh, the stress and strain of city life seems to be taking its toll on you, Watson. Hmm? Whatever happened to the tolerant man I used to live with? A man only has so much tolerance in his soul, Holmes. You soaked it out of me like a sponge. Take you me for a sponge, my lord? <laughs> Macbeth. Oh, Hamlet, Act 4, Scene 2, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. I'm surprised you didn't remember that. Holmes, no one remembers Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Most of the time he can't even tell them apart. I can't say I've ever had any problems. Oh, we're wasting time. What do you mean, we? Tell me about your interview with the Bellamys. Would you care for a toffee apple? No, I would not care for a toffee apple, thank you. Mm. Uh, Mr. Bellamy proved to be a middle-aged man with a flaming red beard and a generous head of hair. Did he indeed? Don't contain your enthusiasm, Doctor. Well, I must admit that I had much the same thought. The lion's mane. Mm. He was also in a very angry mood. I'm of the opinion, sir, and my sons of like mind, that Mr. McPherson's attentions to Maud were insulting. Insulting? That's a strange attitude. The word marriage was never mentioned, and there were letters and meetings and a great deal more of which neither of us could approve. So much for the secret liaison. I was right then, protective. Unless, of course, young McPherson really was just using the girl. You knew him pretty well. What did you think? Well, he was a respectful, old-fashioned sort, rather quiet... An admirable son-in-law, or so I'd have thought. Did you ask Bellamy just why he objected so strongly? I was about to, when the lady herself came in. Well, what was she like? Women have seldom been an attraction to me, Watson. Seldom? Are you saying that she was an exception? Certainly not. Holmes, you're supposed to be giving me data, remember? Just tell me what she was like. She would have graced any assembly in the world. A perfect, clear-cut face, delicate colouring, poise and control. No young man could have crossed her path unscathed. Watson. What? I've devoted my life to exploring the dark side of humanity. What have I missed? There's no way to answer that. No logical way, perhaps. And my brain has always governed my heart. Not always. What was it you wrote? All emotions were abhorrent to his cold, precise mind. Early days. I hardly knew you then. I've always prided myself on my detachment. A woman would have been a, a distraction. I must remember to tell Jean you said so. I meant my own wife, not yours. <clears throat> Holmes, are you deliberately trying to stop me solving this mystery? Hmm? No, 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 certainly not. It's infernally noisy here. Let's see what other delights Fulworth Village has to offer. Oh, that's better. Cooler, certainly. Yes. 
thickness of the walls. Mm. Norman's built to last. <laughs> it's not too cold for you. No, 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 no. no what a splendid window. Yeah. Now, Miss Maud Bellamy was wide-eyed and intense. Mm. I know that Fitzroy is dead. Don't be afraid to tell me the details. Remarkable composure. Yes, indeed. Who told her the full story? You or Stackhurst? Stackhurst. And I imagine she took it well. Extremely well. When Stackhurst had finished, she turned to me. It seemed that she knew who I was. Mm -hmm. Prize of fame. What did she say? Mr. Holmes, you have my sympathy and my help. Bring them to justice, whoever they may be. Them? Why did she say that? Oh, my question exactly. Sir... Fitzroy Macpherson was a brave and strong man. No single person could have done this to him. The note in the dead man's pocket. Yes, I asked her about it. What did it mean? I see no reason for any more mystery, Mr. Holmes. We were engaged to be married. Why did you keep it a secret, Miss Bellamy? Because Fitzroy stood to be disinherited if he married against his family's wish. But why not tell your father and your brother? My life is my own. I would have told them if they'd ever shown the slightest sympathy. I will be there, you may be sure. Where, Miss Bellamy? There was a place on the beach where we used to meet. And when? Just after sunset, tonight. Any more questions? Um, did she know if Macpherson had any enemies? None in the world. And yourself? Is there anyone who would want to harm you? No one. Anyone who might be jealous of your fiancé? Have you had any previous... Admirers? <laughs> yes, Mr. Holmes. Several. Including Mr. Ian Murdoch. There was a time when I thought so. Was there indeed? Ah, oh, I can't think of anything else. Have I missed anything that you asked? Uh, not a thing. Bravo. Thank you. I'm not sure he's got me anywhere. There is one thing I haven't told you yet. To do with Miss Bellamy? Most definitely. You remember her words at the beginning of the interview? You mean about bringing them to justice? Whoever they might be. Yes. As she said that, it seemed to me that she looked straight at her father and her brother. 3.45. On to the next place? There isn't one. You're staying in Forworth? That's not what I meant. You're now in possession of practically all the facts. Practically all? What about the findings of the inquest? It was adjourned for further evidence. <sighs> what will you have done? You examined the beach again. Mm, but with no more success than the first time. The dead man's room at the school? Nothing. Then you would have gone over the whole case and tried the old eliminate the impossible approach. Be my guest. Right. The facts first, then. A popular and talented young man sets off as usual for his morning swim. Uh, did he always go alone, by the way? I asked Stackhurst that very question. No, he didn't. Quite the contrary. A few of the students almost always went with him. Did they, indeed? What happened that morning? Ian Murdoch set them a maths test before breakfast. Now, that's downright suspicious. I thought so. Carry on. McPherson gets to the beach, prepares for his swim, but before he can get into the water, he's savagely attacked with some sort of flail or whip. Look at these. Yes, photographs of the wounds. Mm. Good God. That's inhuman. Why didn't you show me these earlier? Because I didn't get them myself until this stage of the investigation. I hadn't seen the wounds in this much detail until now. Right. These lacerations are remarkably thin. Yes. As if they were made with very fine wires. Do you have your lens with you? <clears throat> yes, here, here. Thank you. Now, these wounds aren't even. There are dots of blood spaced all along them. A very fine cat and nine tails? It's devilish, whatever it was. After all these years, I still find it hard to believe that one human being can do something like that to another. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. Uh, that's true, I suppose. Cynical, but true. Ah, suppose Murdoch set his test, then hurried out to the beach. No, Stackhurst would have seen him. Is there another route? Yes, another path down the cliff nearer the school and then along the beach. So, he sets his test, rushes out unseen, gets to the lagoon and attacks McPherson. Then he hides in one of the grottos in the cliff face until he can slip away. I thought you decided that he had no reason to hide. Because the top of the cliff is invisible from the beach, yes. Mm. Perhaps he's just afraid that there might be someone about. Criminals are cowards, superstitious lot. Yeah, it's not very convincing. What about other possible murderers? The Bellamy's, I suppose, father and son. 
Yes, I really believe it. A man with money and local influence doesn't need to resort to murder just to get rid of an unwelcome lover. Could you have been mistaken about that, Clarence? Yes, I could. <sighs> Eliminate the impossible. Time to give you the next developments, I think. I'm listening. Macpherson's dog was found dead on the beach at the very place where his master died. His dog? Did you examine it? Mm, shortly after it was found, the body was stiff and his eyes were bulging. There was agony in every line of it. Killed by the murderer? But why, for God's sake? Some sort of revenge. I didn't know. You said developments. Plural. I think it's only fair to tell you that I had the first glimmerings of an idea about them. May I ask what sort of glimmerings? Or would that be cheating? It was something I couldn't quite put my finger on. Have you ever had one of those nightmares where you feel that there's some all-important thing? You search for it, you know mm. it's there, but you mm. don't know exactly what it is, and it's always just out of your reach. That's how I felt. Yes, I know what you mean. The harder you try, the more elusive it gets. Yes, precisely. The best solution is to give up the struggle. Let it surface in its own good time. Well put. Eliminate the impossible. Uh, what were the other developments? There was just one. Someone else was attacked, exactly as Macpherson had been. Ian Murdoch. Murdoch too? <sighs> yes. Yes! What exactly happened? I was at home. He burst into my sitting room with Stackhurst close behind him. He'd found Murdoch down on the beach. The same spot? Okay, almost exactly. Murdoch's shoulder was marked with the same wounds and he was in agony. Brandy to deaden the pain. Something soothing on the cuts. Did he have any cream? Soft butter? Something like that? Mm, salad or... Yes, cream. that would have done it a pinch. Mm, it seemed to help. Murdoch was already half in a faint and the brandy put him right out. We sent word for a doctor and while we were waiting, Stackhurst told me what had happened. Well, Holmes, I was walking... Yeah, wait, wait! Let me see if I'm right. No, let me ask you this first. What was Murdoch wearing? A bathing costume covered by his coat. Yes. And Stackhurst found him at the very edge of the lagoon. He'd been swimming. Bravo, Doctor. I have another question. <laughs> I rather thought you might have. What do you find, McPherson? You said he was naked from the waist up. I did. Describe his trousers. Grey wool. Oh, damn it, Holmes, you know what I mean. Clumsily fastened, somewhat crumpled. You might have told me that at the very beginning. Well, I didn't realise the importance of it myself until considerably later. Uh, and his hair. What about his hair? Well, I rather think you can answer that yourself. He was in the habit of anointing it with oil. Slicking it down close to his skull. Absolutely correct. Do you have the solution? Uh, not all of it. Not yet. Hmm. Did you, at that stage? Yes, but I had a distinct advantage not available to you. You were in your own home. I was. With your own books. With my own books. And you've always been quite a collector of books. Every subject under the sun. I'm an omnivorous reader. It was something you'd read. The thing you couldn't recall. It was something you'd read in your own library. So you were able to find it again. Or did you just remember it out of the blue? As you said, it uh, surfaced. <laughs> home. Home. <laughs> Watson, yes? Well done! Now, which one? Would you like me to show no, you? No, 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 no. Just give me a moment. Ah. Damn. But I'm close. I must be close. Extremely. Then. Here we are. Yes, show me. Out of doors. By J.G. Wood. The famous observer. That's high praise coming from you. Never read it. No, but you have, and recently too. There's a clear fingerprint in the dust along the top, you see? Mm, seems I must speak to Martha about her standards of cleanliness. You're changing the subject. Now I know I'm right. Well, aren't you going to look inside? Not yet. I'd rather think that this is that moment in the spotlight you promised me. I want to enjoy it. You deserve it. The stage is yours. Thank you. Now... The most important clues were the dead man's trousers and the oil on his hair. But why, Holmes? I mean, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Together with the unusually high temperature that day, even before breakfast, when you found the body, you were too distracted to realise the significance of the trousers, but you couldn't have missed noticing it if the man was soaking wet. He wasn't. And so you concluded that he hadn't got as far as going for his swim. But you were wrong. The early morning sun had dried his body. And the oil prevented his hair from getting wet. The trousers... The trousers puzzled. But you said it yourself. McPherson was an old-fashioned, withdrawn, very proper sort of man. Well, even so. Perhaps I've had more experience of it than you. It may be hard to accept, but it's true. Even if the body's in terrible agony, 
There's a part of the brain that concerns itself with the most ordinary, mundane, everyday thoughts. Such as not leaving a secluded bathing beach and going into a public place without first making oneself decent. I was forced to accept it in the end. What it all adds up to is this. He wasn't attacked before he took his swim. He was attacked during it. And the same was true of Ian Murdoch and even the Richard Dog. And what's more, it wasn't murder. Am I right? Absolutely right. Does this book have an index? The page you want is 73. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Behold! The lion's mane! <laughs> You enjoyed the weekend, I hope. Enormously. I hope we can do it again sometime. Yes, I hope so. Sometime soon, Holmes. <laughs> I can't promise you another murder. You didn't give me one this time. <laughs> Don't be pedantic. Not pedantic. Accurate. Did you? Did I what? Enjoy the weekend. Or will you be glad to get back to your peace and quiet? <laughs> ah, stand back. Right. Have a good trip. Thank you. Oh, here. What is it? Something to read on the journey. Thank you. Goodbye, Watson. Goodbye. Start on page 12. Uh, uh, right. Goodbye. See you soon. <sighs> the Adventure of the Lion's Mane by Sherlock Holmes. Hmm. Page 12. I led the way along the beach, peering eagerly into the waters. I had reached the deepest and stillest part of the lagoon when my eyes caught it. Cyanea, I cried. Cyanea. Behold, the lion's mane. Hmm. The strange object did indeed look like a tangled mass torn from the mane of a lion. It lay some three feet under the water, a curious, waving, vibrating, hairy creature with streaks of silver among its yellow tresses. It pulsated with a slow, heavy dilation and contraction. Cyanea Capillata is the miscreant's full name, gentlemen. The gale must have blown him into the shore. As dangerous as the bite of the cobra, and far more painful, the most deadly of all the jellyfish. The constable stared at me in silence. Well, you've done it, he said at last. I'd read about you, but I never believed it. It's wonderful. I was forced to shake my head. To accept such praise was to lower one's standards. Really, Holmes, couldn't you come up with a better ending than that? <laughs>